Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. Um, in this video, I'm going to answer question two from January 2020, the International A Level Edexcel Pure Mathematics P1 paper. Um, here it's telling us that we are given that y equals 3 to the power of x. We have to express each of the following in terms of y. So we have three different expressions here. A, B, and C, and we have to express them in terms of y, uh, given that y equals 3 to the power of x. Okay, so this is all about indices, and these questions will be based on the laws of indices, and the laws of indices are three main laws, okay, which are the addition law, so when you have two, two numbers with the same base multiplied together in index form, you add the powers, um, doesn't look like the powers have been added here, so I don't think I can use that. When you divide two numbers in index form with the same base, you subtract the powers. Again, this doesn't look like a subtraction here. And when you raise something to the power of something to another power, then you multiply the powers. So it looks like that's what's happened here. And we have to express things in terms of y, and y is equal to 3 to the power of x. So we need to express these expressions in terms of 3 to the power of x. Then we can replace the 3 to the power of x with y. So we have to rewrite these so that they express in terms of 3 to the power of x. Now that last law will be useful here because 3 to the power of 3x can either be written as 3 to the power of 3 raised to the power of x that will give you 3 to the power of 3x because you multiply the powers. Or you could write it as 3 to the power of x to the power of 3. Because you multiply the powers, you get 3 to the power of 3x. Now this is the form that we want because we want to express things in terms of 3 to the power of x. And as y equals 3 to the power of x, I can, just, I can replace the 3 to the power of x with y. So this is going to be y cubed. So we can say 3 to the power of 3x is equal to y cubed. And we have the answer for part A. Simple as that. Now, part B says, remember we have y equals 3 to the power of x is what we're going to have to express in things in terms of y. So again, we've got to break this down in such a way that we end up with 3 to the power of x. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use one of the other laws um, about the reciprocal. So for example, if I have a to the power of negative m, it's the same as saying 1 over a to the power of m. So what I can do is I can rewrite this as um, this is... 3 to the power of negative x minus 2. Okay, so I'm just rewriting with the negative power, which is the same as 3 to the power of negative x plus 2, which is 2 minus x. And then I can use our law that we, we just described. Two numbers with the same base. When you divide them, you subtract their powers. Okay, so I can break this up into 3 to the power of 2 divided by 3 to the power of x, which is 9 over, now we know 3 to the power of x is y, so it's 9 over y, so we can say 1 over 3 times x to the power of minus 2 is equal to 9 over y. That's fine. If you want to write 9y to the power of minus 1, it's fine as well, but this is perfectly fine as your answer. And then we got part c. Okay, so again, we're going to use the uh, we're going to try to write things in terms of 3 to the power of x. And when we've done that, we can then, um, you know, write them in terms of y instead. So we've got 81 over 9, 9 to the power of 2 minus 3x. Now, what I could do here is very similar to what I just did. Um, I could rewrite this um, as 81 times 9 to the power of... And instead of 2 minus 3x, this is going to be 3x minus 2. Okay, and the reason why you can write it like that is because, remember, 1 over a to the power of m is the same as a to the power of negative m. So I can write this as a numerator, and, you know, if I put minus 2 minus 3x, I'm going to get 3x minus 2. So I've just made the, the, the power negative. Okay, now... I need to end up with 3 to the power of x here. So let's just re rewrite these in index form. This is like 81, which is like 9 squared times, and I've got 9 to the power of 3x minus 2. Now, if I use the law 
a to the power of m times a to the power of n equals a to the power of m plus n. So I can add these powers. So it's 9 to the power of 2 plus 3x minus 2. Now the 2 and the minus 2 cancel out, so you're left with 9 to the power of 3x. Okay, so we're not quite there yet, but 9 to the power of 3x. I have to end up with 3 to the power of x. And I know that 9 is the same as 3 squared. So I can replace the 9 with 3 squared. So I have 3 squared to the power of 3x. So again, I've got this, this power. Okay, 3 to the power of 2 raised to the power of 3x. Now I could write this as um, 3 to the power of x raised to the power of 6. So I multiply the powers, that would be 3 to the power of 6x. Okay, and I can, write, I can write the 3 to the power of x inside here. That will give me 3 to the power of 6x. This is going to be 3 to the power of 6x. And this will also be 3 to the power of 6x. And now I've got what I need. I, I, I can replace the 3 to the power of x with y. So end up with y to the power of 6. So we can see that 81 over 9 to the power of 2 minus 3x is the same as y to the power of 6. I was just messing about with these powers and... Uh, these laws of indices to get what we need and there's the answer for part c okay so a b and c done uh, for question number two two finished um, if you want to see other questions on this paper the playlist for the paper will be showing over here if you would like to see other questions about this topic of indices and i think thirds together probably you'll see the playlist over here for that for p1 indices and you can subscribe for my, to my channel from clicking on this icon which should come up around here and on the top of the paper I will put a link to some other P1 material, maybe another past paper. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.